Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to be doing another art challenge. If you are a sewer, you probably have one of these. I know I do. I have a bundle of scrap fabric that I just feel horrible about throwing them away. It's like it's just enough where I think I can make something from but not enough to actually even bother with. <laughs> so I just kind of hoard it. Well I thought it'd be kind of fun to see if I could actually make anything with my scrap fabric. But besides just doing that, I'm also going to be kind of blindfully grabbing into it to see what I get. So I don't know what colors or what size of fabrics I'm gonna go for. Obviously I'm gonna try and grab pieces that feel big enough to actually use. So we'll see what we can get. Anyways, this is my scrap fabric right now. I've had the bad habit of not adding to it lately for some reason, so it's not as big as it could be. But there is a ton of different colors in here, and I'm gonna stick this real quick into something that I can't see, because obviously I can see into this, and I want to be surprised along with you. So let me switch that over real quick, and then we're gonna see what type of fabric we're gonna get. Okay, so I've got all my scrap fabric in this box. I've got a little hole cut into it. You can't really see inside of the hole. My hand's gonna block any type of view that I have. And I'm gonna reach inside this and grab probably three or four pieces of scrap fabric. And hopefully we can make something kind of cool with it. So let's find out what we're gonna get. I'm just gonna dive my hand right in there. Hopefully I don't get stuck. And I'm gonna try and go for something of multiple different textures. I kind of want something long furred and then I also want to get something with like a short type of fur. So I really can't tell how large these pieces are when they're in here. Okay, I've got a hold of something. Oh, I got multiple things. Okay, this is the majority of it. Okay, so we got a light pink. That's interesting. Push that back in. <laughs> Let's see what else we're gonna get. I'm gonna try and reach onto a different side of the box. I'm gonna go deep for this one. Okay, I've got something that feels like it's shorter. Ooh, it's a red. That would actually kind of work with the pink. And it's large, that's gonna be really helpful. Okay, I'm gonna go for one more piece just because those are way too easy to work with. And, okay, I think, hold on. I think we'll go for this one. Got a hold of something kind of soft. Ooh, okay, we got a purple. Okay, so I think that's enough fabric to work with. I'm gonna see what I can do with it. So I'm gonna end up designing the patterns and stuff and we're gonna make an art doll with this. So let's get started. Okay, so let's take a look at the fabric that we ended up getting. So it looks like we have a small strip of pink fur fabric and then we have a slightly larger strip of purple fur fabric. And then lastly, our largest piece is this nice burgundy red fur fabric that has this kind of little dangly bit off to the side. So since this fabric is our largest piece, we're gonna have to use this for the body and then the other pieces can be like accent colors. So I think what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna go with a baby dragon for our creature. I haven't done one in a while and I felt like just kind of doing it. And since we have such little fabric to work with, making a baby creature is probably the best idea. So I ended up drawing out a very simple pattern for this. I decided I wanted my baby dragon to be sitting up, so I ended up drawing out the pattern in a sitting up position. So this is the main body piece, and then I have all these other pattern pieces drawn out. I originally thought I'd give this piece ears, but I ended up changing my mind, so we're not gonna end up using that kind of triangly bit right there. And then my idea for the purple and pink, how we're gonna use this is I'm gonna have a strip of fur fabric that runs down the back of the dragon and I'm gonna have it alternating between purple and pink. So it's gonna be striped. So we're just gonna make tiny little rectangles of the purple and pink and we're gonna sew it together in one long strip. So we're probably gonna do that first. I'm gonna get that all out of the way because it is a little time consuming but it's also really simple. Now to make sure that I had this long enough, all I ended up doing was I measured the very top of the dragon's body. So I just started at the top of the head and I went down the back of the dragon until I got to the end of the tail. And then each piece of purple and pink fur fabric that I'm using is roughly about an inch by two inches. Now that that's done, we're going to move on to putting the body pieces together. So I'm going to take the side pieces for the body and I'm going to take the inside parts of the legs and we're going to sew down the tops of them. Again, we're going to have this have a wire frame, so I'm going to leave the back of the legs and arms open so we have room to work with. 
And then after that, we're gonna sew the left and right body piece to the belly piece. So we're just gonna have this right in the middle and sew each down the side. As you can see, this pattern was really easy to put together. So that's basically all the sewing right now until we need to put everything together. So I'm gonna start on the clay pieces now. So for our clay pieces, we're gonna need the face, the arms, and the legs. So I'm gonna start off with the face first, and I'm just gonna take a large lump of clay, and I'm gonna lay it out on my glass container. I'm kind of leaving this face a little flat, so I'm not starting off with any tin foil or anything, I'm just going straight onto the glass container. So I'm just gonna lay my clay out, make sure it's nice and even, and then I'm gonna start building up clay where I want the snout of the dragon to go. Now again, since we're going with a more baby type of dragon, I'm gonna go with really wide, big eyes for this. So it's gonna look a little cartoony, but it's kind of the style I'm going for. So I'm gonna take some really big balls of clay and I'm going to smush them into the face where I want the eyes to go. I'm gonna make sure they're nice and even, and then we're gonna take strips of clay to outline this to make the eyelids. After we have the eyes in place, I decided that I wanted to have some scales going down the face. So what I'm gonna end up doing is just take some smaller balls of clay and I'm gonna smush and layer them going down the face. And then after that, I'm gonna start working on the nostrils and the mouth of the dragon. I decided that I wanted to go more beak-like with this dragon to make it look kind of like a baby chick or a baby bird. So other than the eyes being quite large, I'm gonna leave most of the other features really tiny, and this is gonna help make the eyes look even bigger. Lastly, I'm just gonna add a little bit of fur texture to the cheeks, and I think the face is done, and we can start moving on to the hands and feet. So to start off the hands and feet, I'm going to start with a little bit of clay and we're going to be making the bottoms of the hands and feet first. So I'm just going to put a little bit of clay down and then we're going to roll out some balls of clay to make the toes. So I decided that I wanted the toes to be kind of fat and chunky, so to make it look a little bit better, I decided to go with three toes instead of four. So I'm just going to lay my balls of clay onto my surface and then I'm going to start blending them into the clay and then cleaning everything up. So that's basically all I'm gonna do to make the bottoms of the feet. So I'm gonna put these in the oven for roughly about 25 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. We're gonna let those bake and once they're cooled, we can start putting them onto a little wire frame and working on the tops of the feet. The main reason I'm gonna be adding these to a wire frame is to make it just a little bit easier to handle and I have something to hold onto other than the clay. And plus with the way I'm gonna design the creature, the back legs are going to be on a wire frame to help hold it up, so I might as well already start putting them on the wire frame. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of clay to the front of each toe. So this is kind of going to be the first scale of each toe. And then after that's in place, we're gonna use our tools to kind of straighten everything up. And then what I wanna do is I wanna add some claws. So I'm gonna take little balls of clay and I'm gonna roughly shape them into a cone. Remember, this is a baby, so we don't need anything super sharp. So we're just going to push it into that clay that we already added to the front of the toe. And then we're gonna use our tools to blend everything together and straighten it up. And then after we have the claws in place, we're gonna start adding scales going down the foot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll out a bunch of little balls of clay and then we're gonna make them kind of into ovals and we're gonna lay them across and kind of overlap them on the toes. So we're gonna do the outer toes first going up the foot and then after all those scales are in place, we can work on the middle toe. And then once we have all of our scales in place, I'm just gonna straighten up all my lines and then we're gonna do the same thing to the back legs as well. Once we have all of our feet finished, we're gonna put these in the oven for probably another 35 to 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. And then once all of our clay has done baking and is cold, we can start on the painting. Okay, all of our clay pieces are done baking, they're nice and cool, and we're gonna start on painting. So the first thing we need to do for the painting is we need to primer everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try my best to match all of the clay pieces to the burgundy color for the body. Now remember with acrylics, they always dry a little darker than what they look like when they're wet. So make sure when you're trying to mix up a color to match something, make it a little bit brighter because it will darken up later. So I'm just gonna cover all my clay pieces, make sure everything is nice and coated, and then once that's dried, we can start adding details to it. 
Okay, now that everything is primered and is dried from it, we're going to start adding the details. I think I'm going to start with the face first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the eyes. I know normally I paint the eyes last, but with this face, it's just going to work easier to do the eyes first and then to paint around them. So I'm going to start by going over the eye with the color that I want the iris to be. So for my dragon, that's going to be blue, but you can use whatever color you want. Now before you add anything else to the eye, make sure that this layer has completely dried because when you go in and start adding more, you could end up picking up this layer and messing everything up. So just make sure this is nice and dry and then we can start on the pupil. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my black paint and we're going to paint on the pupil. So for my eye, I want the pupil to take up majority of the eye, so the only thing that we're going to have left of the blue is just going to be a kind of a little slit at the very bottom of the eye. So I'm just going to cover up where I want the pupil to go and then I'm going to kind of blend it into the blue. Now honestly, I don't think I'm going to add a white highlight or anything. I kind of like how the eyes look right now. So I'm going to start painting the scales around the face. So I'm going to start with the scales between the eyes and I'm going to go over all of them with a nice pink. And then I'm going to do the same thing to some of the scales that I added around the face. Now after I had all the scales painted pink, I decided that I kind of wanted the scales in between the eyes to match the fur fabric that we're going to have going down the back of the dragon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over every other scale with a purple, that way it matches and continues down the back with the fur fabric. And then the last thing I think I'm going to do on the face is just add a white highlight here and there. Okay, now we're going to move on to painting the feet. So I'm going to start with the bottoms of the feet, and I'm just going to add a little bit of a pink highlight to the toes. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that pink, I'm going to put it on the toes, and then I'm going to use my other brushes to blend it in. And that's basically all I'm going to do to the bottoms of it. Now we're just going to be painting the scales and the claws. So I decided that the scales on the outer toes I wanted to be pink, and then the scales in the middle of the foot I'm going to have purple. So we're going to be painting the scales pink first, and then we're going to go over the purple scales. And then lastly, I'm going to be painting the claws a nice white color. Now since we're going over a darker color, we are going to have to do a few more layers than normal, just because we got to cover up that burgundy color. Okay, so all of our clay pieces are done. I'm going to let them dry a little bit, and then I'm going to apply a thin layer of resin over everything to help protect the paint. So this is going to have to sit overnight and cure, and then in the morning we can end up putting everything together. Oh, while those are curing, we're going to work on a pair of wings. I almost forgot we need a pair of wings for our dragon. So I'm going to be making these out of felt, and what we're going to do is we're going to be layering felt. So I just drew out a simple little pattern, and I'm going to draw this out on the first layer of felt. Now I want the web of the wing to be pink, and then the little finger pieces to be purple. So the middle felt is going to be pink, and then the outer two felt is going to be purple. So I'm going to trace that out, and then I'm going to cut out the little finger pieces and trace that out as well. So what we're going to do, since everything is drawn out on the first layer of felt, is we're going to pin them together, and then we're going to follow the lines for the finger pieces with our sewing machine. After that, we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut out our wings and then we're going to remove any of the extra purple felt that's covering up the pink felt. So you'll have something like this once you're done. Okay, so the next day everything is dried and ready to be put together. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our fabric body and we're going to add the arms first. So we're going to take our clay hands and we're going to add glue around the base of the wrist and then we're going to take the fabric for that hand and we're going to start gluing that around it. So we're just going to push it into the glue, hold it into place, and let it dry. And we're basically doing the same thing with the back legs, but because they're on a wire frame we do have to run the wires through the backs of the legs. So once those are all in place, we're going to let them dry a little bit, and then we can sew up the back of them and stuff them. So I'm just going to go down the back of the legs and the back of the arms with a needle and thread. Okay, now we can add the head to the piece. So we're going to be gluing this to the wire frame, and then we're going to be gluing the fabric for the neck all the way around the base of the head. Next, we're going to be sewing our wings onto the body. So make sure that they're nice and even, and then just sew them into place. 
Lastly, we're going to add the strip of fabric to the back and start closing everything up. Make sure that you're stuffing your body as you're closing it up so it's a little bit easier. So you're just going to keep sewing until you get to the very end of the tail and then you're just going to tie it off and then you're all done. And that's how I did the scrap fabric challenge. I had so much fun. Our little dragon, which kind of looks a little bit like a Furby, is going to be in my Etsy shop with a lot of other creatures. So make sure to check the links down below if you want to buy anything. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!